2018 marks 10 years since that unforgettable final here on Centre Court, featuring Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal. While much has changed in the intervening decade, those two giants of the game continue to lead the way. And both are dreaming of glory again. Eight-time winner Roger Federer arrives as the defending champion, number one seed, and still very much the man to beat. Can he do it again? He's incredibly fit. He certainly looks to be moving better than we've ever seen him in the past. And also he's so mentally strong and he's also been very, very clever with his scheduling. Missed the entire clay court season, but knows how he can be ready, fit, fresh, motivated to come back at Wimbledon. There were some red flags in Halle. He lost the final there to Borna George, and even on his way to the final, there were several matches where you didn't necessarily see the best version of Roger, but then that's what these warm-up tournaments are for. So more than likely, he will address all these issues coming into Wimbledon. And, uh, and yeah, I, th I think that Roger it, it is a very strong favorite. If you'd have said uh, in, in 2008, 10 years time, Federer and Nadal are gonna be the two favorites for Wimbledon, I think a lot of people would say, well, you probably, need your head checked or you don't know much about the game. That epic Federer Nadal final had a little bit of everything and will live long in the memory for those who witnessed it. I think it was one of those uh, perfect storms. It's quite difficult to replicate. For that match to have gone to five sets in, in, in the gloaming the way it had, the, the swings and, and, and the changes in momentum, and above all, that was one of the great rivalries in terms of the contrast in the two players and the way that they dressed and the way that they carried themselves and the way they played. It didn't turn into the complete permanent torch passing that it might have been feeling like at the time, because Federer obviously didn't go away. Federer came back, and they haven't played again since at Wimbledon, which is kind of too bad. Maybe this year, if Nadal can pick up his clay momentum again onto grass, they can have a rematch, which 10 years on would be pretty special. It's phenomenal what they've both continued to do with, with Federer now up to 20 Grand Slam titles. He's won here eight times. Uh, Nadal just having won his 11th French Open and, and 17 slams. You know, who knows what more uh, they can achieve, but, um, you know, Federer would be my favourite coming in and, and Nadal a close second. Roger and Rafa have shared the last six slams between them, with Nadal's dominance on clay showing no sign of coming to an end. But the Spaniard's form hasn't always translated onto grass. His defeat against Gilles Muller last year, the latest in a sequence of early exits at SW19. He was really frustrated that he lost that match to Jill Muller because I think he felt like this that was a real chance for him to get to the final. And, and normally we see with Rafa that if he can get past the first few rounds, then there's, there's very little that's stopping him. He's not as invincible on grass, and he certainly had a, a run of a few shocking losses at Wimbledon, losing to uh, Lucas Russell, Steve Darcy, and these are not players who would normally beat him, certainly not on clay, but not at major tournaments regardless. Uh, but he has been more vulnerable at Wimbledon, but he's still coming in on a lot of great form on clay, and he's still a great player and still not anyone who any opponent would relish getting to play at Wimbledon. While Nadal and Federer appear to have overcome their injury concerns, Andy Murray is still feeling his way back from the hip problem, which contributed to his quarter-final defeat in the 2017 Championships. After a year on the sidelines, he's only played three competitive matches, so five set battles are sure to test him to the full. You can't underestimate what he's been through, the type of surgery and the problems he, he's had with his hip. Given his style of play as well, it's very physical, so he's got to be on it to, to give himself a chance. And I think it might be too much too soon for him. Andy Murray's game is entirely built on his movement, so if his movement's even 5% off, then he's not going to be the same player that he was. In Murray's absence, another Brit has come to the fore in the slams. Kyle Edmund enjoyed notable success during the hardcourt season, how he would now love to shine on the grass. Kyle Edmund is in an unusual situation this year at Wimbledon. It'll be the first time he'll be the British number one at Wimbledon. So in previous years, Andy Murray's taken all the focus. Probably for the last 10 years or so, it's all been on Murray and everyone else has been slightly in the shadow. Edmund, on expectation and seeding, will be expected to go further. He had a great breakthrough in Australia, reached the semi-final, and he has got a game that can do damage on grass. He's got a big serve, he's got a big forehand. You know, he's seeded to get to the fourth round, maybe higher. So it'll be very interesting to see how he handles all the expectation.
I think that he's done well so far with pressure and he keeps surprising us. Even on the clay, he did really well, which is not necessarily his best surface. I think he's going to do well. Uncharacteristically quiet in the slams of late, having not reached a final since the US Open in 2016, Novak Djokovic's recent form suggests he could soon be a force once more. The three-time Wimbledon champion caught the eye with the runner-up finish at Queen's, a timely boost as he seeks a return to the top of the game. He probably feels better about his form because he hadn't made the final in a year. He actually tried to take pressure off himself the other day and said, I'm not the favorite for anything. I shouldn't be considered a favorite for anything. But I think he learned a lot during that week. He has been physically handicapped most of the last season by his elbow problem, which he now says is cleared up. He's mentally perhaps been lacking that sense of self-belief, but that's beginning to come back as well, I feel. Certainly in the last few months, uh, Djokovic has really been trending in the right direction. It seems like he's playing pain-free, he looks like he's focused, and he's won this tournament before. I wouldn't put him in the same category as Federer and Nadal, but uh, I'd certainly put him in, in the next group. There are several players in that group, among them last year's runner-up Marin Cilic, who tends to find an extra gear on grass, as demonstrated by his second title at Queen's recently. Cilic has won a slam before. Uh, I guess winning Wimbledon would be the peak of his career. He's been very consistent in the last couple of seasons. He's been making a lot of semi-finals, quarter-finals of slams, um, and the final last year of Wimbledon. He's got a massive game. Um, if he plays to his potential, then he can take anyone down, including somebody like Federer. Sam Querrey has done really well in the last couple of years. He's made a quarterfinal and a semifinal. Uh, Milos Ronic made the final a couple of years ago too, and if his health holds together, big guys with big serves and big games. Those are the kind of players who traditionally have done best at Wimbledon. A lot of people would have thought that other people, younger players, would have come through and won Grand Slams by now. It hasn't happened yet. Alex Zverev, for me, is the guy who's going to be the one. He, he made a big progress at the French Open. He won matches, he got through the fourth round for the first time. I think he will create a lot of confidence from that. I think he's the player out of any of the young players with the next one to win a Grand Slam. So to the draw, Roger Federer plays Serbia's Dusan Lajevic, Andy Murray meets Benoit Paire, who he beat in 2017, Rafael Nadal faces Dudi Seller, and there's a tasty tussle between number 60 Grigor Dimitrov and Stan Wawrinka.